Hello and welcome back to N24 Radio and Television. It is another Gum Show show with me, your host for the most, Maria Masizaho. You know how we do it always, but today also we come with a different. Today I will be the, uh, is it episode two of season two, right? Episode two, season two. So um, I have a different guest. It's not an artist though. I know you all be thinking it's which artist, which artist, but it's not an artist. So let's go with the introduction and we'll be right back. Introducing our guest of the day. Born in March 1996, Poet Sidibe is a Gambian poet and co-founder of Team Sab. Poet Sidibe is a spoken word poet who started his poetry since 2016, putting in his mind that he would be the voice of the voiceless and the oppressed. You don't care about hell, no. You should care because they are sentient beings like you. They feel what you feel. To make sure this dream of his is fulfilled, Poet Sidibe announced himself in the spoken word poetry industry by dropping his first album titled It's Time. In 2020, before hitting the airwaves again with another banger titled Listen to the Gone in 2021. My dear people, it is with a great sorrow that I speak to you reminding you and begging you to listen to the gun. Listen, please listen to the gun. Let it be the growing butterfly that will fly and take us high to the sky. Poet Silibe is among the best poets in the Gambia as he contributed and still continues to contribute in promoting Gambian poetry. Now, he is on the verge of a poetry album titled The Firewall in October. Okay, that was Poet City Bay. I hope you had everything about his background. Now you have an idea of who I'm having in the studio. So, Poet, I Poet, but kind of Poet more with the spoken words and everything. I really enjoyed it. Apart from music, I think I enjoy spoken words more. So, you just give us a bit, and then if you know there's a poet in the building, then we can take it from there. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I'm so quite welcome to the show yeah thank you it's a pleasure oh, being here okay i think this is the first time we have an interview on the on the tv right yeah you want to have it on the radio so we do have a background but even though you know for you we should hear it from the horse's mouth i want to say we can say it from Poet city with mouth <laughs> so Poet, tell mm -hmm. us a bit about yourself yeah Poet city is uh, just a humble guy and Poet, he's a poet and an activist, mm -hmm. but he does a lot of uh, spoken word poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy is just somebody who believed that he owed the voice of the voiceless a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why he ventured in spoken word poetry to be the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've started it for a while now because since uh, 2016 up to date, spoken word poetry mean like roughly uh, seven, seven to eight years. Wow. Meaning he he got a lot, you know. He got a lot in this field. Mm -hmm. So he's a guy who has a dream. And his dream is to be the voice of the voiceless. Because we, he believed that there are so many people suffering, so many people, so many things living a life that they want to express, but they don't have a, the right guy who will voice it out for them. So mm -hmm. he came to be their voice. One thing I love about poet is that they don't speak directly. It's not when I come in, they're like, he. <laughs> yeah, that's quite silly, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, take us through your school uh, time, like the schools that you attended. Yeah. I, I did my schooling, my primary school at Bijulo, but later I left to Kaur. 
-hmm. That's where I attended, completed my primary school. I went there to upper basic school. I did whole my school in Kari at Kaur, yeah. upper from there to Kaur Senior Secondary School. But I was as uh, somebody who, the people who knows me before, mm -hmm. I was, uh, I, I was radical, they call it, whatever. I was, I, I never believed in education before because wow. I, be, schooling, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that school is not a brain making factory. I was always said, I have a, I have a talent, so why not slide the school dictate what I should be or not? not yeah. So But later, at the later on, I went, uh, I focused on my grade 11, grade 12, focused on writing poems and stuff like that. I said, okay, as far as I have a dream, to be the voice of the voiceless, then schooling will help me a lot. Mm -hmm. So I finished there, I went to the Gambia College. Uh, I did my, ad we are the first, ad I did my advanced diploma there. Mm -hmm. And then I started teaching, I moved to IOU to do my hybrid there two years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm working, but it doesn't stop me from doing what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm working, open my poetry academy. You know, I'll have less time because all my time I spend it on uh, what I believe is what is right for me. Work, uh, educational stuff, poetry, and that's it. That's it. That's great. So before coming to your poetry, we we'll go to your childhood days because I love to uh, bring back memories, mm -hmm. especially when it's childhood memories. Those are memories that we can never have again. So um, take us through your childhood days. Which kind of a kid were you? Yeah, I used to be uh, a side type and I was, sometimes I, to people, I give them mixed feelings. Sometimes I become so cool, sometimes I become a radical. They say they cannot predict me. You know, I have respect, but sometimes I act otherwise. But when you look at that, I was, a tro I was somebody who I was a troublesome someone okay. because I, don't, I hate nonsense. Mm. You know, if you create, if you diss me, mm. you will see the negative part of me. Okay. I have friends, but at later on, I don't believe in friendship again. Because I will go with you, we have problem. If we fought, I quit, go another person. So I was like, I used to be a very stubborn kid when I was young. Right. But with that, I have stuff. I have principles. I work with principles. Mm -hmm. If I know that we cannot go together, mm -hmm. you know, we move. But better still, if some of my childhood friends, when they see me, they were like, it's poet, city, where this is you. No, mm -hmm. this cannot be you. Yeah. You know, sometimes I believe in this Jamaica stuff. Jamaica like I used to be this oh. gangster people, you know. I believe in Jamaica life, okay. Jamaican life, you know. Yeah. So sometimes when I remember how I used to act during our, in my childhood time, mm -hmm. especially when I meet with my childhood friends, you know, they remind they, when they remind me about uh, what happened, what transpired, you know, I used to laugh, say, Yeah, mm -hmm. go on days, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has a story, a story at the past, you know. Yeah, sure. But thank God now things are different. No. So what was the craziest thing that you have ever done during your childhood days that you will not forget? Yeah, quit in school. I quit. You quit? Yeah, I quit school and people were like, Bagway was stuff. I wanted to go to Bagway. <laughs> Which I quit. was that? I was in my grade 10. <laughs> I quit. I came, I said, I have to go to Bagway. Because the time I came here, mm -hmm. I, I used to have friends here. Mm -hmm. I realized that many of them left. They went to Bagway. Where are they? They're in Europe. I said, wow, then I have to go. So I quit school. I came here. You know, I was focusing like I have to go, but my pe my people didn't allow me. They were like talking, and my mom. The time she interfered, I I changed my mind. I went back, uh, and I regretted doing this. I was like uh, fighting with my best friend. There's, I fought with one of my, uh, my my best friend because of a friend. They told me he said this. He said I didn't ask him. I just came in. You you went and dived with my character. You fought. He didn't even know what happened. So after he explained this to me, but still now when I when I remember that. I feel bad. I feel like in my childhood time, the greatest mistake I did is uh, breaking the trust of someone who trusted me the most and uh, leaving school saying that that wasted my time. And mm. Yeah, it wasted my time a lot. Okay. So these two things, I, will, I always remember them, especially when I see my this childhood friend. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a good guy. Al Kalo. Don't heal. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> how, how, how did the poetry come to you? Because you started in 2016, but maybe it's something that has been into you since your childhood days or since your school days. How did it come to you? Yeah. Yeah, I used to be uh, a poet. I write poetry since my school, my, my, uh, my schooling time. Mm -hmm. But I love spoken word because of Chorno Gay. He was, we were in this, he was, uh, like, he was, we were in the same school. 
but he left, he finished school before me. So he wrote a piece called The Missing Key. Okay. You know, The Missing Key. So our you remember piece, that piece? Can yeah, you, can it's, it's a piece, it? I can vividly remember some few lines saying that he regretted fighting with students, uh, with teachers, you know, scaling over fence, and he was not a serious guy, though. But he loves education. So his, that piece, our principal recited that piece. Wow. You know, I was like, wow, this is heavy. You know, so why not, when I write new, so I try to recite it. I think uh, what, I, what I've learned in this poem, I can also write something and teach other people. Yeah. So the time I finished school, I came here, I met him here, I went to visit him. You know, I visited him at home, we, we, start, we have a, a whole day, he's So it's like, you know, I remind him about this piece. He said, I wrote this piece a long time. I said, yeah, this, that piece, when I remember this poem, I always want to be the voice of the voice because I see myself in that piece. Exactly. So I, I have to write things that people will see themselves. So that's how I started spoken word. He told me, okay, but you can do it. Just speak when you write, just, so that's it. That's how it goes, you know. Okay. Yeah. So how is it on the start? Because I know everything at the start, some other people will encourage you, others will try to discourage you. Well, how was it for you? Yeah, it was, it was tough though, because my, my own people were the first people who were discouraging me. Because sometimes they would call my mom, I was like, I've been, I'm following programs, not going to school, attending my lectures. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, sometimes when I write, I have an event, I will come and beg for performance. Please give me just two minutes, let me perform. People, some will allow me to come in, but others will say, no, mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, they will just tell me, okay, wait, I will wait until the program is over. And I was like, okay, oh. Sometimes I find it very difficult when I have program, they invite me. People don't pay before. Mm -hmm. You have to struggle, pay your fair, go and come. Sometimes you pay unfair, you go, they want to give you a platform to perform. My friends were discouraging me. You know, this is a waste of time. Some people were like, even I'm always, you know, you are mad. You're sitting, talking to yourself. You're, you are mad, you. So like all those things, but I gave deaf ear to all those things. I was like, even if poetry didn't pay me. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be the voice of the voiceless. The voiceless. I want to speak for the voiceless because I know someday, you know, someday they will hear my voice. You know, that's why I never give up. Interesting. That's really interesting. I've never, I've never give up since then. You know, maybe someday I will give up. <laughs> okay, we'll come to that. So, which uh, poem was your poor first poem? Yeah, it's the creatures. The creatures. I wrote a piece. That's my first spoken word piece. It's called the creatures. The ones I wrote for for animals. What inspired that? Yeah, and Doctor Dafe. Was once I attended a, a program, a symposium. He was talking about animals have rights. Why are people torturing animals? You know, deny they have welfare. They need. We need to, to believe that they are sentient beings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like okay, but people don't talk about that. I have never heard that. That animals are sentient beings. They feel what we feel. We should not beat animals. We should not torture them. We should give them shelter. We should comfort them. All those things. That's a no. <laughs> I have never heard that. Heard that. So, and I also believe that other people, they didn't uh, hear that thing. So I have to write something about it. So I went home. I, I wrote this piece called The Creatures. That's my first spoken word piece. You still remember the yeah. lines? Yeah. I, I hope you remember. guys are not like the artists no. who will forget their first Yeah, one. sometimes I write, uh, you know, <laughs> it's crazy, especially yeah. when you're working on new things, you know. Yeah, because you know. the musicians will be like, oh, that was my first song, yeah. but I miss relates now. How about you? Yeah, but I can I can remember I can remember a few lines. Okay. You know, it has been a while though since 2019. Can we hear that? Yeah, it's about the creatures. You know, said since the cradle of mankind, men were never kind to non-human kind, but they are creatures as we are. So when we tortured them, they are not fear to man, for nature. So unseen they suffered, unheard they cry in agony. Animals linger in loneliness they die, and nobody talk about it. Yeah, this has been a while though, but I think <laughs> those are, the, I can remember those, those few lines, you few know, lines. talking about their welfare, uh -huh. you know, animals cry, unseen they cry, uh, unseen they suffer, on hard they cry, in agony they linger, in loneliness they die, and nobody seems to care, Yeah, you know, 
So those things, I believe. That's right. Sometimes when I close my eyes and, and see the picture of what I, what I say, like, you know, when I write a poem, mm-hmm. I, I would close my eyes and imagine of a picture, you know. And if that picture, I believe, suits what I said, that's, that's how I write this. So after what Dr. Dave said, I went home, I wrote this, I sent it to him. No, before sending it to him, I sent it to the to the uh, to a group that he added me. So he didn't know me. He read that piece and called me. He said, "Are you poet Sidi?" I said, "Yes." You wrote that piece on the group. I said, "Yes." He said, "I am going to send you five hundred dollars credit for writing that piece." I was like, "Wow, <laughs> only this thing." So I I I, I danced <laughs> in my room because I was like, somebody has uh, recommended what I wrote. Mm-hmm. He said, this is powerful. And if you want to, you know, develop this, I will sponsor you. If you want the video, the audio, everything, I said, uh-huh, on the whole, people are watching. Yeah. And that, that was the first poem that I recorded. I recorded and shoot the video, you know. Okay, that is how everything begins, that I, I, I have a dream. And this dream will be fulfilled and has to be fulfilled. Be fulfilled because someone, has invested something. something in my journey. That's right. So, so I uh, already said how you felt after that because you got inspired by someone, you know, who saw what you did and appreciated it, and then still ready to invest in your career. I think that alone is just enough for yeah. motivation, yeah. which was great. So after that, what followed? Yeah, after that, what followed? I was I was there. My last year, that was after that, 2019, I had uh, a contract with one organization, is to teach the farmers and uh, public speaking. Which organization was? Is uh, is connected to CRS. CRS. The CRS yeah. thing, you know. Is so I went to to Bansa. You know, I met my own father there, my father. Okay. So it's like, so I have to teach those people. And your father was a mother. Oh, wow. I don't know how you, where you say this. I was like, <laughs> come, teaching my father and teaching him what he first believed that that's, that's wasting my time. Sorry. It's like I have every opportunity to make him believe that what they told him that was wasting, that was the thing wasting my time. That is what is uh, bringing me here. That's what brought me here mm-hmm. until. I can. So I, before I stood and recited a piece, a powerful piece, everybody was amazed. You understand? Before I, I, I started lectures, I recited a piece. Before they was boring, I said, okay, let me come in. Mm-hmm. The first lecture I was given a lecture, I said, let me come in to make the place lively. So I have recited a piece. Everybody was amazed. So we went out for, for break. People were coming like, oh, that piece was great. That, so like, but he didn't, he didn't tell me anything. He was like, people were coming, congratulating me for that. Mm-hmm. So after lectures, he called me. He called me, he said, uh, how long have you been doing this? I said, for a while now. I didn't tell you because they, <laughs> you told me I am not concentrating on my education because they, they said I am following programs, doing stuff. This is what I was doing. So maybe what they told you about me, mm-hmm. if I come and tell you this is what I'm doing, you, may, you will not appreciate it. So I was like, let me give you evidence. I know that someday will come. I will convince you on what I, what I do so you will love it. So he said, he said you know, I'm proud of you. So I was like, then this is another thing. <laughs> You know, okay. this, this, this is another thing, you know. Yeah, sure. So I still remember that day. And I have people who always, that's where I started having fans, you know. Sorry. People were like, you know, I'm your fan. I'm your fan. Yeah, that's where I started <laughs> having fans, you know. So those okay. folks, those people, I still remember them. Because mm-hmm. still, still we communicate. Okay. You know, and they always motivate me. Keep writing. I hope you are writing. So then they said, we have had this, we saw this, you know, keep it up. So that is what made me strong. Okay. Because my parents appreciate what I do. Yes, you do. So after that, let, let's come to your first album, which was "It's Time." Yeah. yeah it is time. Why it is time? Good. It is time. Meaning. What time is it? To show the world what we can do. It is time 
to show the world what we can do. Ask for you know, it. Ask for it. How this way I launched an album, you know. The album launching, spoken word poetry is not, is different from written poetry. Spoken word poetry is just like, you know, we can see it like rap or other stuff. It has connection. It is just, as it, it is slower than rap. But rap is faster than spoken word, but they are related. They have connection. So a spoken word artist needs to produce albums. Albums that will, that, that will you know, go, because, you know, it's just the Gambia. But even if you go to Senegal, because I have a few poets from the Senegal, they're making way for the international market. Wow. You know, they're going abroad, performing for, for their country. You know, why not the Gambia? So the only way we can do is, we have to do big things. What, are, what is bigger than launching an album? It's not about, poetry is not about uh, going to the studio, record a piece, rec- uh, share it to me, say, wow, you are great. You know, you rec- I once wrote this piece that I am tired. I'm tired of coming on stage, reciting, people clapped in without listening to the message I sent. I said, wow, Sidibe, you're great. Why not? They don't give a damn about what I said. So people, when you are on stage, even if you mess up, they will not notice it. They will just be like slap, following the pam, tim, pam, pam, you know? <laughs> so why don't you compose those things, put it in an album form? Pump it to the people. You know, it is time for poets to blow. It is time for poets to express themselves, to show the world what they can do. Mm-hmm. So I just use it is time. It is time. Yeah. So let's go and then watch that video. It is time. And we'll be right back. Joy, 
Mama te jem, fama te jem, bingi balo buka fante. Akan dukun di watu wati ya buka dumoro dina. Niku beto nata aka kala adingol tema. Nin fansun kuo nata aka mabo nyabu kaje. Nin balafa warata, nin kuo barafa warata. Ate wu bayo maleti. A fama in Alabama, Pehetatale, Atem, Ayo, Poletti, A fama in Alabama, Pehetatale, Dinning Devo, 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 Devo. Welcome back after that video, which is its time. So when was this um, album released? Yeah, it was 2019. 20, it was uh, no, 2020, 2020. 2020. It was uh, on the 3rd of January, 2020. Remember, yeah. How many spoken word tracks do we have there? I have 12. 12. 12 and six videos. Wow. Which one of them is your favorite? Uh, the one I wrote for my mother. Which one? Was Can we hear it? Yeah. I wrote one for my mother. Yeah. Right. He said, when I was young, I was not so strong. So when my mom went to the market, I always stumbled and tumbled because I was not used to the struggle. But today, Today I believe that there is no human being like mother. There is no sympathetic and empathetic human being to a child like mother, the lovely mother who bears the nine month pregnancy and the one day greatest pain in life. She is the mother I love. She is the mother I want. She is the mother that breastfeeds me. She is the one that teaches me the greatest lesson of life. So if my, my life get bright, I will never say bye bye to mom. I will stay by her side and give her rest, refresh her emotive stress because she is the one that teaches me the best. So I will never fair if I deny her the happiness. So begalul say yai bulko de merlo. Ak lung tu ti tuti bul fati na mo umba, mo juru, mo sang, mo sang, kon jamono bum sope ko banga diko fonto, wala mui wak, nga diko tongu, diko tontu, diko songu lulu, soka depe, sula mere, sula danke edinga sangu. Kon yomi dom, kon dekal de begal say yai, paski man suma yai da mai dekal diko gerem, mo mag jaral derem, yai man sa dom, nao nala, man nop nala, gom nala, fonku nala, sembegel si chof yai, man nasi leka barrega. Le fomo de kaneka di nala fafeka. Ma tok sa boor di la begal di la sagal. Paske pasena ay jamono yay. Nga jay sa ay laitay mu metikir bay mu suloye. Bay bay tay kon togal muñ lodon muñ. Paske olof njay ne ku muñ muñ. Na dunia ta diala fon na ku jawa kela. Ku ol ta diala fon na njinela na nene ta jampa di la kapi. Kata bent na. Kata menti bi. Itali ati na. So it's about that piece you know. I love that piece. Wow. Just great. It's, it's a, it's and how, how you switch from yeah. English, Wolof, Maninka? Just forget a few, few lines, but you know, since 20, 2020, you know, wrote that piece. But that was my favorite piece because I wrote that piece. Yeah. It reminds me a lot about my mother. That's why anytime I recite that piece on, on, a, on a platform, I, my heart used to be full. Wow. You know? Because we believe, I believe, when, I, when you remember, when I was young, all the struggles that, that happened, you know, our mothers take care of us. Mm -hmm. you know, let's forget about the nine month pregnancy and all that stuff. But you're young, you stumble, you can walk, all those things. She, she took care of you. So you've grown up. Better still, you have to see us, your mother, your everything. So yeah. that's why when I, when I, the time I was writing this piece, the, the piece took me one month write it because mm -hmm. sometimes I write it say no I have to change this my mother this word is too cheap for my mother I have to use something <laughs> big for her special you know I love that piece and the one I wrote for the psychiatric patient, psychiatric patient. that one is a life story I witnessed that I was mad I said okay then I have to write this mm -hmm. and I love that piece too you know that piece reminds me a lot that's why I love the, I love people who speak for the voiceless 
I want people to realize that there are so many things going wrong in our society that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I was talking about. You know, if you follow my poetry stuff, you will realize that I always speak for the voiceless and the oppressed, things that happen, current issues. Sometimes they ask me, how do you think? How do you write this thing? Sometimes I wrote things, they said, do you experience this? I said, no, it's someone's story. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Either it's joyful or it's sad, but everybody yeah. has a story. Mm -hmm. And there are people who hide and cry. They want, they, they want to speak out what is in them, but they don't have a right guy who will do it for them. So if you do it for them, they will love you forever. That's why some people, they love you naturally, and they will love you forever. Sure. So when you speak, be their voice, you know, they will celebrate you. So okay. that's how it goes. So it is time for people to speak out the points to show the world that they can do it. With any dream they have. If they come to, to conquer, come to get fame, to get money, it is time for them to show the world that this is what they come for. So, but I came to show the world that I want to be the voice of the voice. Great. So after it's time, there is another album, which is, um, I forgot. The gun. The gun. The past. Yeah. The gun. Yeah. Why it's time? It's time so that like it's introducing you mm -hmm. to, to, to the poetry scene. Like if I hear it's time and it's poetry, I'm like, okay, maybe he's coming in. Yeah. And then you go with the gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came already now. So I came and I've realized that the time I came, we forgot about so many things. So I came and I have I've realized that my generation my present generation we forgot about a lot mm -hmm. so i have to bring that to connect it with my time so that we will know who we are mm -hmm. if you don't know where you came from you don't know yourself yeah. so that's why i brought the past connected to the present because there is a future i am seeing and a future that i want everyone to see that's why i have to bring the past connected to the present and we guide goes on anyway as the gun some people were like you you know, you're old. <laughs> uh, I said, yeah. no, I am not old. I just follow my way. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many things that our grandparents told us. You know, I, I, made, I made a research before coming with this piece. I will sometimes, you know, I ask kids, how do we say label? Label. In, if you are in, in Jola, you say, I don't know. How do you say it? You know, in Maninka, in Wolof, it's somehow yeah. easy. How that do you say it in Flak? They said, we don't know. Wow, that shows that that cultural practice is no more. Mm -hmm. We are not practicing, and that's where you get wisdom yeah. from. Yeah. Ask people about their culture. They cannot tell you their real culture, how their people were living. So, but, and that is what we should not forget. The West are coming here, learning about our culture, going there, practicing it, you know, making millions. So why not we forget? You see, a, grand, a once old man once told me, there will come a generation where we will go to the West, learn about our culture. No, the disasters. Because we are forgetting about our roots. Yeah. So why can't we connect it? That's why I brought the gun. You know, reminding okay. them about our culture and tradition. Tradition. See, the Dara, the Haftan, the Ndelbu said, the Lebon, the Lupin, the Khalen, the Lagan, the Khalet. The khalam, the riti, the balafo, and the kora. It's gone our days, unforgettable days. Yeah. You know, those things. So now we believe in the, you know, we don't wear no ties. I will start wearing garamuas and start going to concert. <laughs> <laughs> See, some people yeah. are like, yeah, hey, you, you are mad. Talking about, you know, if you listen to that piece, talk about, uh, we, you, we are in the utal, the channel, the bat rider, and the club. It was mm -hmm. like, I'm not discouraging that. You can. It's, it's normal because when generation calls, you have to answer. answer. But no, where if don't get deep in it. Sometimes you have to remember the gone, yeah. the past. You know. Sometimes you wear. Sometimes I wear a chai. I will go. So <laughs> that day I become the talk of the town. Wherever I pass, they will look at me and laugh. <laughs> I take everybody's attention because they believe that a young boy, is, I don't know, should not wear a chai. Chai. Hey, see, what do you wear? They say, yeah. They started <laughs> pointing finger at me. So I get the concept, meaning we have, we, 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 we want to be so modernized that we will not even wear our own thing. Things. You're right. So, that's why I brought the gun. The gun. You know.
and um, I think I attended that lunch in there, yeah? if I'm not wrong. No, that was that was. Which one was that? No, that, that was uh, okay. The, the program <laughs> that you guys attended was that one was um, an advocacy event. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, there was this organization that I wanted to bring together. To show the people that we can use poetry to advocate for the people because if you see talk about peace we talk about uh, animal welfare we have talk about you know uh, a dead that the dead, dead peace yeah. and so many things so we can connect poetry in so many ways mm -hmm. connect music with poetry we can connect storytelling with poetry, poetry. we can connect so many things with poetry yeah. because it is unique sure. that was an advocacy event my my luncheon was at uh, uh, west, Af west african insurance institute that's where I did it, and it was great because great people came. You know, you know. I told you what pe when people love what you do, they will appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You know, the likes of the Lord Mayor, is just like she loves what I do, and and I'm thanking her for that. That any anyway anywhere I call, she comes, she support the likes of Doctor Dave, the likes of Mama Africa, mm -hmm. and even yeah. Ensemble Fal helped a lot in my last album launch. You have Maria Madan, so, so many people that, even, you know, sometimes they will call, some people will call me silly, but you're quiet. When are you cooking? We, we are ready to support. Mm -hmm. so, even yesterday, someone was telling me, the farewell album, what can we do for you? Just mention what we can do for you. I, mm -hmm. I just said, okay. said, when the time comes, you will hear. Because mm -hmm. right now, I want the album to tell you guys what you can do for the mm -hmm. album, but not me. Because there's so many things in it. in it. Yeah. So this is the dream. And the time they came there, they love what I do. If you attend my live performance, you obviously know that poetry is powerful. I'm not talking about listening to my audios or watching my videos. But if you witness my live speak performance, I think you were there. Yeah. You see, I can connect anyway. I can make people laugh on stage. I can make them cry. Yeah. I can make them smile. This is the power of spoken words. Mm -hmm. That's great. So I I also um, like this poem that you did with this. Is it the pen? Yeah, the nip of the pen. My the, daughter. The nip of the pen, yeah. which it talks about the dead father. Yeah. That one was so emotional. <laughs> People will be like, "See, yeah. your father has passed." I said, "No, this no. is someone's story." Yeah. You know. You know, if we talk and tell me my dad passed away, but I'm come home is like hell to me. So when I go home as a poet, I, I, I have to connect that. Yeah. I have to make people to hear this. So mm -hmm. this is it. This is someone's story and it's real. Mm -hmm. The time we were recording this, we were so, you know, real about it. So that's why it, is, it becomes a real piece. It's a life story. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you meet us performing it on stage, mm -hmm. we can make you cry because you can yeah. connect. Connect everything. The story. Yeah, that's right. Because that 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 piece is just amazing I, I just like it it's not that my father is dead or something but i just like the piece it's so emotional and talks a lot about your father and even if your father is alive if you're listening to that piece i think you will value him more because you will thank god for still having him around you so i really i really like that piece so before coming to the farewell i think we will use the farewell to, for today's farewell <laughs> Let's talk about Team Sap. Okay. How did you come up with that? Yeah, Team Sap is was three of us, me, Aminata Yayo and Preacher. Okay. Have a friend called Preacher. So we were like it was an abbreviation. S A and P. S stand for Siriwe, the A stand for Aminata and the P stand for Preacher. Oh. Aminata Yayo is a singer. She sings. And she is powerful. I met her singing. And I was uh, invited to be a judge in a uh, Miss Kube's beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. I saw her singing a story, her own story. I love the story. People cry the time she sang that song. It was like, uh, but when we listen to music, we listen to it mm -hmm. with feelings. But when we listen to spoken word, we listen to it and listen good. Mm -hmm. I guess you understand. Yeah. Good. So I said, you have a story, and we can connect that story. So you sing for me, and I will recite poetry. All right. That's how it goes. She did. 
she would sing a recite. Say, wow, why not we can compose this and produce something? She was the first artist I tried this with and preacher. We did one called The Power of Love. It was great. Ah, and, and Aduna, her story, just to use that as Aduna, and the other one, Power of War. It was great. I said, okay, and now people were like, Sidibe, you know, I want to be like you. I want you to mentor me. I was like, I'm working with two people. But if at all you guys want to be with us, we can register it as an organization and it will work. But we were doing a lot. You know, the reason why some organization will start and fall is because if they know how it starts, I guess you understand, mm -hmm. if they know how it starts and what builds that organization, they don't joke with the people who build it. I don't yeah. know if you understand this. Understand. Gambian, so many organizations, you start it and the founders will leave and the others will come, other executives, yeah. and it falls because oh. they don't know what steps were the founders taking in order to make that association so bad. It was great. We have, and then it grows. People come in. We have powerful poets and poetess. I was so happy when I see these people. Sometimes we have even at Bara, we cross river to have poetry event there, mm -hmm. join Bara people so that, because the dream was us to grow. We went around, we have uh, men, uh, members at Basse, Bansang, we were growing. So now we went, I said, okay, now preacher, and you and me and Yaya, why not we become an advice and we have these people to have their first organization, uh, executive. They mm -hmm. have executive, we register it, so it grow. But an uh, organization where people grow, and they have realized that we have grown, they will understand. And Gambia, the reason why we're going, this is the fact, the reason why we are behind is when youths come together, mm -hmm. they always want to see that I want to be this and I am this. Mm -hmm. If you moment in the organization, you want to say, I am this, meaning you, you're saying me instead yeah, of us. us. So then witnesses come. Yeah. I guess you understand. So, but it grows. And still now, when I see Team Sharp members performing, I say, wow, I love them. <laughs> but it grows. So they went, we are now advisors. I said, why not then? This is an organization and they are growing. Mm -hmm. Have powerful poets and poetess that are making wave at the national level. I have youngsters. Why not I have started something also of having an academy and train people. Mm -hmm. So Team Sab goes. I mean Team Sab because I'm a co-CEO. Mm -hmm. But I want to do something also for other people. Because in Team Sab we have super people, superstars. If you want to be there, then you have a long way to go. So, but we can start something fresh again. At the grassroots, when you grow, you can mm -hmm. go and join, join things up. That's how it comes. And then the academy came. Interesting. So the academy came and grew big, bigger. To an extent that, you know, we having, we started our inter uh, regional inter-school championship. Each region, we have 10 schools. We started at West Coast. We are going to CRR this week. Mm -hmm. uh, this, 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 maybe next month, or after Ramadan. From Sierra, we move to URR, and then we we'll move to LR, and then we have the National Poetry Championship organized by the Academy. Then we have, we open, because we have 125 members now, so then after that, we open it and make it bigger. Interesting. I think it's going viral now in the country because before, Gambians did not know what poetry was. Mm -hmm. We, we, when we see someone recite, we're like, wow, this is super. Is it magic or something? Like, how did the person come up to write all those things and still have it in his or her head? And then just stand there and then recite, everything goes perfect. How does it happen? Others would like to join, but they would like, I, I can't do this. So what, would you ad what advice would you have for those that want yeah. to join, but think that they cannot do it? You know, I always tell this to my students, that, you know, God is fair and God shares ideas. Sometimes you will think about something and you want to do some exact that thing. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, let me wait. And you see somebody do that exact thing. Exactly. So, yeah, it is my idea. <laughs> because it was given to you, you don't value it. Yeah. Anything that comes to your mind is something possible. Mm -hmm. We have talent and skills. We have, your talent is a natural gift, something that God gave you. Mm -hmm. But skill is what you acquire, what you learn, the knowledge that you acquire. If you want to be this, work on it. Mm -hmm. Work towards it. You will be. You can do anything that your mind turns up. Any idea that comes to your mind, you can, I want to do this, walk towards it. If you keep it, it will be great. Hey, why you shouldn't do this? Still great. Still now, his voice, the time we know him up to now, what happened? Because what he does is continuous rehearsal. And if you want to do something on it, you have to be in it always. Mm -hmm. You have to, during your recreational time, do it. Anytime, do it. You will one day be the best in it. Sure. 
sure. So everything is possible, unless what you don't want to do. Yeah. So um, it's almost time. Time is almost up. But before we're leaving, we have to talk about the farewell mm -hmm. because, as I said, that's where we'll say bye bye for today's uh, episode. Yeah. But before that, City Bay, you said it's time you came in. It you be, you talk you talk about the corn. You bring the culture in, and now you are bidding farewell. Yeah. What does that tell? It's bye bye to Gambian spoken word. I will represent the Gambia. You see, my dream. I always say this, and sometimes, anytime, anytime I, I come with something, they will always people who say this cannot be. You know, but I want to quit spoken word in the Gambia, organizing events, organizing stocks, but not spoken word in general. I want to sell my poetry after this farewell to the international market. And I promise, and I believe, with the help of God and the spirit I have, that one day we will see Gambian spoken word in another. Yeah, why why yeah. did you want to quit uh, spoken words into the Gambia? I want to quit due to so many reasons. Due to what I've experienced, you know, but all those things are just mere reasons. What experience? Yeah, what I had a story. You see, I wrote one piece. The, the main purpose of this spoken word about, I wrote this album, this in the farewell, there's a piece I wrote called My Mama Said I Have to Quit. That is my mama's word. The time I was sick, you know, okay. I was sick, and that piece I will release it, and it's gonna be a masterpiece because it's a story. It's my story, and you know how stories are yeah. powerful if they come from you. Yeah, you know, she said I have to quit. So all those words, all what she said, I compile them, you know, with the vision I have that I want to take Gambian poetry to another level. So after this album, any album that I have worked will not be launched in this country. I will try to, you know, do it somewhere. So you quit it? In yes, the so, yes, launching an album. This is my f last album launching in this country. And it's going to be a heavy album because it has so many styles, poetry style. There is poetry and music that I do that is not direct music. There is poetry and rap that I do in the album. When you talk about spoken word, what it means, it is in that album. And the farewell piece, what I have experienced. Since I started Spoken Word, I have done a lot for free. I write for free, perform for free, help people record poems free. I help people sponsor videos for free because I want it to grow. Mm -hmm. So now it is grown. I have mentees that are willing to do more than launching an album. So why not I can do something bigger than launching an album? So I have that plan and I'm um, for 2024, inshallah. The Gambia will hear that. They will hear that. But this time is the farewell, is the bye-bye. And, and if you miss this, you will never witness my performance, poetry album performance in this country again, where it's going to be the last performance. I'm, I'm, I'm giving up in this poetry. I always said this. I said, I have give up on giving up. So meaning I will never give up again. But if I tell them I'm giving up, they said, but you said this. I said, yes. But if I don't give up, there will be no people who will come up. You understand? We need to give up on things. Other people come up. So giving up is not an action of uh, leaving at all, but going somewhere. To my own view. I've given up doing on this, so I'm going to, another, going to do another thing. We have mentees mm -hmm. that are coming. They want to launch albums. Yeah. So why can't we think about something bigger than launching an album? What is bigger than launching an album? It's selling the poetry to the international mm -hmm. market. Gambian poetry is only Gambia here. So why can't we... You see, our, our, our poetry is rich. When we mix Wolof, Mandinka, Fula, it's going to be something new to the external world. Mm -hmm. When we take it there, they will be like, they will be interested to know what are we say. Yeah. So we, will, we are forcing them to come to learn our own stuff, our own language, our own things. So selling our native product to the international market is something that we should be thinking about now. Yeah. Instead of launching So I have been cooking this album since 2021, 2020. The whole 2022, I cooked this album. And it's going to be a masterpiece. And it's going to be a piece that everybody will talk about. Because it's going nationwide. It's, I, I, I told, let, let me tell you this today. This album, any piece that I release in this album, the whole country will talk about it. Why? Yeah, because it's going to be a heavy thing. 
I've, it took me one year, six months working this album. And it's going to be the farewell. <laughs> I will make people cry, I will make some people laugh, and I will make some people to feel, you know, have mixed feelings. Mixed feelings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, About. so um, when will the album be launched? It's October 20, 28th, October. 28th of October. 2023, inshallah. 2023, inshallah. Wow. You know. That's not far because time flies, they say. I think time is going really fast. So before um, saying bye bye, taking off today's farewell, <laughs> what is your relationship with other poets in Uganda? Yeah, it's. it's it's okay. Our relationship is, is fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I love every poet. I, 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 you know, I, I take every poet as my brother. Every poet is as my sister. You see, I have a weakness. It's my heart. I always say this. Mm -hmm. No matter what I am, see, I, am, I, am, I always said I am, I am cool but not nice. I am this. I am a human. But my heart... I can attest to my heart because even though no matter what happened, if I see talent, I appreciate it. You're good, you're good. But it's human being. Sometimes to you, I'm okay. Sometimes to him, I am not. So it's how people, but every Gambian poet is my brother. Okay. You're welcome to my zone. And if you invite me to your zone, I'm, I will come. If you don't, I'm come because you're my brother. Every Gambian poet is my sister. If you welcome me, I'll come. If you don't welcome, if I, you know, my zone, you're okay. You know, that is me. That's why I have, if you see, I normally have collab with poets, mingling with them, because I want them to feel good. Nobody is bigger than anybody. Yeah, I, I want to come, on, come up on that. Like, we do see artists having collabs, great artists having collabs. And in the Gambia, we have a lot of very good poets as of now. Why not you all come together? Just give us a massive piece. I think that will be a very good, great idea that that will sell poetry in the Gambia because we have witnessed so many people reciting poems, spoken words, but it's just great. I look, I just like listening to it forever. Why don't you all great heads come together and then just give us something? Yeah, that is it's possible and hoping, anticipating to see that someday it will be inshallah. But you won't be there if you quit. Uh, but someday it will be someday. You know. Will it be somewhere else? Yeah, someday it will be, you know. Okay. So um, coming back to your farewell album luncheon, will it be tickets? Yeah, that that depends on what we have. That's why you just said like you have been giving out for free for a yeah. long time, now. Yeah. and right now it's a farewell. I think we are going to see something different, like yeah, buying tickets to witness. That's that's going to be something new, you know. Thank God I have people who always will want to say, and have events, they will mm -hmm. buy tickets and say, see the way? We have bought this amount of tickets. We have bought this amount of tickets. Mm -hmm. So the ticketing thing is, I want to place everything on my management stuff. Because I told you this, I want to go beyond this, con I want to go beyond borders. So now I have brand myself to an extent, have everything management stuff. And they're working towards that and hoping to have. That's why I started this media tour, to speak for myself. Mm -hmm. And when they started their media tour, they will speak on behalf of the management and all the stuff. But they will be ticketing, I am sure. Mm -hmm. And anybody that comes there, you will, you will not regret with, with this event. So I love, I have a story that I want to stay. A witness, a life story that I wrote. A piece called Them. It's in the album, Farewell, but I want to connect this because it's right now affecting our country. Okay. You know, it's called them. You know. She asks, why are our youths living, preferring to travel using the sea, risking their life or the deserts? So I said, I don't know, actually, I don't know, but soon to be, you put ni buga dem togi toki ngir teki teral yaay ak bay taxna ba ñi jël gal dem ñi duga ñi kopo ñi jël flight deggu the likes of usman da ba xey rek dem ñukoy wër ay fan ni kete dem na ñu xey ben bi school yaay am ñoko hello mom ye yaay yaay usman mu ne waaw ñoko ndey san dem sa guddi gaaden jël gal wa yalla 
jël na bakanam ci ndox bi rek mu indi lo xam minan dena usman dena mom dena ker bi riir mo nan dena usman dena mom dena mu joy mu nun ko ti su mamam nan ko do mu ñal ndax am de metina ndax am mom disna lol ndax am de metina ndax am mom disna lol way yalla mom alalam jël nako jël bu kir bi rir suma tanta jugnan li lan moko fi jar xana tekki fi mu nun fi am manako aha kay si bour ak dagame baye lu ñoo pour ndawé ñu bok ratch rank lek borom aleli baye di simé ciéré rongo ñi ba doolo lu ñoo pour ñop ñu bok ko ñu bok ko nek ben liggé pour sun rowmi taxaw company sampu ndawé ñen fi dess liggé so it's like a story that i would have fixed in is in the album connecting the someone's story is them you know when somebody go to bagwe pass away how they react in the compound is so emotional i know so I just can't wait for that film album I will, I will I will try my level best and be there inshallah if I'm well and healthy. So well, uh, how many how many um poems do we have or spoken words do we have in that album? It's 15. Oh, the other one was 12 and this one is it's, 15. It's 15 and it's indeed a farewell. Okay, so we are almost at the end of the program. How do you feel being here today? Yeah, it's a pleasure having you mm -hmm. being the host. Mm -hmm. My favorite, uh, you know, Gambian, <laughs> Gamb journalist, they call it. You know, I love what you do in yeah. giving chance to the Gam Gam Gambians, to you youngsters, to come and support. They're telling into N24, they have been doing a lot because I've been seeing them covering programs, and it's my pleasure being here, mm -hmm. asking for a platform you guys gave me. That's something big to me, and if everybody do that, everybody will have chance to speak out sure. their voice. And I'm indeed honored. That's why I said today. I'm going to my favorite place. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. So happy and thank you all to everybody, you know. You're welcome. Yeah. So, but before leaving, you have to give me a piece, yeah, a good bad piece. But before that, thanks to each and everyone who was tuning on to N24 Radio and Television. It's your favorite show, which is the Gum Show Bees, with your host for the most, Mariam Susa. And today, my guest was Poet City Bay. I told you this year we come with a difference, like lots of difference. Last year we were, I mean last week we had Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. I just missed those that name. I give it Sophia, Sophia. Now mom nobody aware. I just don't understand. So this is uh, the episode two of season two. And I also had poet City Bay, you all had what he said, he's on his upcoming um spoken word luncheon which will be the farewell and that will be Uh, the time that he will quit uh, poetry or spoken words in the Gambia. We hope to see him on international standards and international platforms where he can sell the name of our country and so on and so forth. But it's a while from me. Till I come your way next week, inshallah. Stay tuned. So, Poet City Bay, today you have to close the show. Not yeah, so this is, this is just a short piece. Uh, it's in the uh, farewell really? album. So, I to James and Sticky. <laughs> Mustafa, thank you so much, guys. I nearly forgot my people. I don't forget them. I don't know what came over me. Maybe it's the poem that he recites that, uh, you know, took me along. But, yeah, it's Poet City Bay. Yeah, this is in the album. It's called Time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's poetry and rap. Yeah, okay. Life, you know. They said life has a clock that tick tock every day. So believe it, it is just a matter of time. The moment is the right time. So before time is not yet time. After time, there is no time. The time is the right moment. And time is the deal. Is the thing. Is the right thing. So believe in time for a time is just the right moment that will click and source your signing day. So do not rust. Wait for your time. So in every second, every minute, every hour you can blow. Do not rust it. Your time, you have to take it. Be faithful, be patient, be gentle. You know, that is <laughs> just <laughs> giving me freestyle. That is rap. I started with spoken word and it goes with rap. With rap. And you know, Tupac Sako once has a dream that every great spoken word artist is a rapper. Mm -hmm. Great rapper. Sure. 
and this is what I want to show to the Gambian that spoken word toys can be rappers. So we can, anyway, no matter what it will take for us, for me to market the, in, the work, spoken word to the international market, I am on it. And this farewell album will show the Gambians that we have already sold out our, in, our product to the international market. market. Great. Thank you for being here. It's a ride for me till October 28th. Am I right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> to the farewell album. Sick. Stay tuned. And say bye bye for me. Ciao. <laughs>